Coming up shortly sporting Lisbon boss Ruben Amorim is supposedly a man of significant interest to Chelsea if Pochettino gets sacked. Darren Bent believes that whoever is responsible for signing Mikhailo Mudrik for Chelsea should be sacked. Also Chelsea are looking to agree a deal to sign Victor Asimhen quickly as they look to pull off a major move to sign the Napoli hitman this summer, according to Napoli magazine. As usual subscribe, give a thumbs up, and turn on notifications and don't hesitate to comment under the video. Leeds United have reminded their fans to behave well when they visit Chelsea for Wednesday's FA Cup game. There has at times been a hostile atmosphere when the two sets of fans have met in previous years, so Leeds have sent a reminder to their supporters about homophobic and discriminatory chanting ahead of the clash. In a statement, Leeds said, ahead of Wednesday's Emirates FA Cup tie with Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, Leeds United would like to remind supporters we have a zero-tolerance policy towards the use of any homophobic or discriminatory language, chanting, abuse or gestures and condemn this behaviour. We will be backed by a sold-out allocation of 5,366 and as always we appreciate your amazing support. However, ahead of the tie, it is important that all supporters understand that the Rent Boy chant is a homophobic slur and hate crime. It was made a prosecutable offence by the Crown Prosecution Service in January 2022, the main public agency for prosecuting crimes in England and Wales. Following the decision of the Crown Prosecution Service making it a prosecutable offence for anyone to sing or use the words, the FA communicated to all its clubs its intention to pursue formal disciplinary action relating to the chant in January 2023. Chelsea have recruited Owen Eastwood to lead a project on history and identity, which will encompass the entire club. The New Zealander has been hired by sporting directors Lawrence Stewart and Paul Winstanley as part of a wide-ranging project to improve the culture at Stamford Bridge and Cobham by weaving in elements of the club's history. In an interview with the training ground guru in 2022, Eastwood said, My specialism is around building an optimal environment for people to compete from. Eastwood previously worked closely with Chelsea's director of performance, Bryce Kavanagh, in the England national team setup. Kavanagh was head of performance as Eastwood worked with Gareth Southgate's England between 2016 and 2022. Part of his work at the Football Association under the respected duo Dan Ashworth and Dave Redden was to set up player legacy numbers that are now given to England internationals. Players are given caps, identity cards and have their numbers stitched into their shirts. The numbers are widely popular among the players, and the environment around the England team has improved radically in Southgate's tenure. Eastwood most recently worked with the 2023 European Ryder Cup golf team as well as the South African rugby team between 2010 and 2019. Chelsea are reportedly undecided on the long-term future of head coach Mauricio Pochettino following the EFL Cup final defeat to Liverpool on Sunday afternoon. The Wembley showdown with Jurgen Klopp's Reds presented the Blues with a chance to earn a piece of silverware during their first campaign under the stewardship of the Argentine. Despite having a number of high-quality chances in normal time, Chelsea and Liverpool were both unable to break the deadlock within the 90 minutes, taking the contest to extra time. After having a similar header ruled out by VAR earlier in the match, Reds captain Virgil van Dijk rose once again from a corner to secure his side's 10th triumph in the competition. Now according to the Daily Mail, Pochettino faces an uncertain time at Chelsea after he failed to mastermind his team to success at Wembley on the weekend. The report claims that the head coach's future at Stamford Bridge will be massively impacted by whether the Blues manage to qualify for European football next season. A spot in the playoff round of the Europa Conference League was on the line in Sunday's EFL Cup final, but now Chelsea will have to find another route onto the continental stage. It is understood that Todd Burley and company do not wish to make a decision on the future of Pochettino before the end of the campaign, although a downturn in results could change the club's strategy. Sporting Lisbon boss Ruben Amorim is supposedly a man of significant interest to Chelsea, although a number of top European clubs are monitoring the Portuguese manager. Although Bayer Leverkusen man Xabi Alonso has emerged as the clear frontrunner to be Klopp's successor on the Liverpool hot seat, it is believed that the Merseyside club are targeting 39-year-old Amorim as an alternative option to the Spaniard. Christopher Nkunku's lack of impact from the bench was in stark contrast to that of Liverpool's youthful substitutes in the Carabao Cup final on Sunday. The £53 million summer signing from RB Leipzig, played for over an hour after coming on for Raheem Sterling in the 67th minute. The France international had three shots inside the box, fluffing one major chance and not looking sharp enough for the other two. 
he couldn't get in the game and had just 18 touches of the ball without winning any of his five duels. Since scoring a sharp finish at Anfield one month ago, Nkunku hasn't looked near the best he showed in pre-season. He looks sluggish, unable to compete physically and lacking in match sharpness in matches against Wolves, Crystal Palace, Manchester City and now Liverpool. The Athletic reports that those inside Cobham remain excited about Nkunku's talents but feel he needs time to overcome his injuries. He missed an initial four months of the season with a knee issue, then endured a further month out over the winter period to overcome a subsequent hip problem. Chelsea fans crying out for Gary Neville to stop talking, were given a real treat on Sky Sports. Blues fans are still reeling from the billion-pound bottle jobs label, the Manchester United legend attributed to Mauricio Pochettino's side in their League Cup final defeat to Liverpool. Pochettino himself has hit out at the outspoken Sky Sports pundit, describing his unforgettable tag as unfair. One day later, Neville was trying to further explain his comments on the West Londoners. Unfortunately for him, as he got into his ranting rhythm, he was stopped in his tracks by a swift interruption from colleague and Sky Sports presenter Dave Jones. At the time, Neville was responding to Pochettino's reaction to his bottle job comments. He said, that was not a reflection on him at all, but that last half an hour, until Jones cut him off by saying, Gary thank you. Before the camera panned away from him, the 49-year-old sarcastically said, thanks Dave, while also putting his thumbs up. Jamie Carragher and Gail Clichy in the studio could not hide their joy at the interruption. The Liverpool and Arsenal legends burst out laughing in the studio while Neville turned away in mild frustration. When the camera did return to Neville, he was able to further clarify his opinions on the Blues. He admitted to being too strong on Chelsea's performance in extra time, even if he still believes they were too passive. Darren Bent believes that whoever is responsible for signing Mikhailo Mudrik for Chelsea should be sacked. The Ukrainian winger arrived at Stamford Bridge more than a year ago, after the Blues beat Arsenal to his signature after striking a £90 million deal with Shakhtar Donetsk in January 2023. However it's safe to say his time in England is yet to really take off. Since joining the club, Mudrik has made 43 appearances for the Blues, with just 20 of those coming in the starting 11. In that time he's managed just four goals and five assists with little to speak of in terms of standout displays. Mudrick was introduced from the bench in the Carabao Cup final with Liverpool, a match that the Blues lost with an error from him leading to the winner. Speaking on TalkSport Drive, Bent said, whoever gave the green light for the Mudrick transfer for that amount of money deserves to be sacked. He came on and had no impact. When he came on I thought this might be his moment. His biggest attribute is his pace, and he showed absolutely nothing. To some transfer news, Harry Kane is unlikely to join Chelsea this summer, according to former Tottenham Hotspur goalkeeper Paul Robinson. The English striker left Spurs last year to move to Bayern Munich and has lit up the Allianz Arena. Although the Bavarians are enduring an indifferent season, Kane has registered 31 goals and 8 assists in 31 outings across competitions. His efforts have apparently turned heads at Stamford Bridge, where Pochettino is searching for a new number 9. Recent reports have suggested that the London Giants are attempting an audacious attempt to bring the 30-year-old back to the Premier League. However, Robinson told Football Insider that Kane would never join the Blues. He'd never go to Chelsea. Kane's only just gone to Bayern Munich, one of the biggest teams in Europe. They're having a faltering season, but he's having a great one and looks like he's going to win the Golden Boot in the Bundesliga. They're still in the Champions League, they're only 1-0 down to Lazio, said Robinson. He continued, I don't suspect Kane would want to reverse and go back to the Premier League after just one season. Chelsea have received a boost in their pursuit of Brugge's Antonio Nusa, according to acclaimed transfer guru Fabrizio Romano, the Norwegian forward is likely to leave club Brugge this summer. Nusa has caught the eye with the Belgian club in recent seasons and is apparently wanted at Stamford Bridge. The 18-year-old was close to joining Brentford in January before a deal broke down. In his column for court offside, Romano said that the Bees are unlikely to return for the player at the end of the season. I don't see Brentford trying again for Antonio Nusa, I'm told this is not something concrete. For other clubs, race is completely open so any club from Premier League but also from other countries can still negotiate for Nusa. I still see him leaving club Brugge in the summer, wrote Romano. Nusa has scored four goals and set up as many in 31 outings across competitions this season. 
Now Conor Gallagher has hinted that he wants to stay at Stamford Bridge amid the rising speculation regarding his future. The English midfielder has been a first-team regular under Pochettino this season. He has appeared 34 times across competitions, registering three goals and six assists but remains linked with an exit. Gallagher's contract with the club expires in less than 18 months, but the Blues are yet to tie him down to a new deal. Tottenham Hotspur were keen to sign him in the winter and are expected to try again in the summer. However, the 24-year-old told Sky Sports that he loves playing for Pochettino. Obviously there is another year and a half left of my contract, and I absolutely love playing with the manager. Playing almost every game has been incredible. Last season, I was in and out the team, and it wasn't this enjoyable. I just want to keep playing as much I can for Chelsea, keep trying to improve and try and be successful, said Gallagher. Chelsea are looking to agree a deal to sign Victor Asimhen quickly as they look to pull off a major move to sign the Napoli hitman this summer, according to Napoli magazine. The report states that the striker will cost the Blues a £111 million because of a release clause in his contract, and the West Londoners are looking to accelerate their pursuit of the striker. It is claimed that Simhen is seeking around £250,000 a week, which Chelsea would be willing to pay. French outfit Paris Saint-Germain are also keen on signing the 25-year-old Nigerian international as well, but Chelsea are now looking to close the operation quickly to beat the League One giants to the deal. Manchester United and Chelsea have both been scouting Bournemouth left-back Milos Kerkers, with the Hungary international impressing in his first season in the Premier League. The 20-year-old joined the Cherries from AZ Orgmar last summer for a fee of around £15.5 million and has been quick to make an impact. Kerkers has already made 19 Premier League appearances, 14 of which have come in Andoni Irala's starting 11, quickly making the step up from the Eredivisie. The fullback spent time in the youth ranks at AC Milan before moving to AZ in 2022 where he became a regular in the first team last season. At just 20 he has racked up plenty of experience, making over 100 first team appearances and picking up 13 caps for Hungary. Transfer expert Ben Jacobs told the United stand that Kirkus has caught the eye of both Chelsea and Manchester United, with both sending scouts to watch the Bournemouth star. The fullback signed a long-term contract with the Cherries, and his value will have sharply risen after adapting so well to the Premier League. Chelsea were extremely active in the last summer transfer window, bringing in the likes of Moses Caicedo and Nicholas Jackson. They also signed Robert Sanchez and Jorge Petrovic in a goalkeeper revamp. However, journalist Simon Phillips has now claimed on Substack that Chelsea have concerns about their ability on the ball, and there has been discussions about it at the club. Sanchez became Chelsea's number one following Kepa Arizabalaga's loan move to Real Madrid last summer. However, the 26-year-old now looks to have lost his starting spot. Sanchez picked up an injury in December, resulting in Petrovic coming into the team and the Serbian has not looked back. Despite the former being fit again, Mauricio Pochettino went for the latter in Sunday's Carabao Cup final defeat against Liverpool. Based on the above and the fact that Chelsea keep being linked with other goalkeepers, it is quite clear that there are doubts at the club about Sanchez and Petrovic, and according to journalist Dean Jones, the Blues could enter the race to sign Arsenal's Aaron Ramsdale in the summer. And finally, Chelsea may have to see off competition from AC Milan this summer if they want to sign sporting striker Gio Kerries. Milan are interested in sporting Lisbon's Victor Gio Kerries and are expected to make contact with the Portuguese club before the end of the season, a report from Sportsman's claims. According to the same outlet, Gio Kerries has a £86 million release clause in his contract and is not fixated on a move to the Premier League in a potential blow to Chelsea. Journalist Simon Phillips recently claimed that some of the bosses at Stamford Bridge really like the 25-year-old, but his release clause means that they are going to have to get their wallets out if they want to sign him. With both Milan and Chelsea seemingly having an interest in Gio Kerries, it looks like they could end up battling each other for his signature in the summer transfer window. He has been in excellent form this season, already reaching the 30-goal mark. Even so, it does not seem like the Sweden international is at the top of Chelsea's shortlist just yet. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Smash the bell icon so you don't miss it. Goodbye.